President Biden is calling on the private sector to help address supply bottlenecks. This comes as the nation's three largest package delivery services are out with their holiday shipping deadlines. A U.S. Marine pleaded guilty in a North Carolina military court today. That's after his social media posts led to charges. And U.S. Capitol Police is requiring agents who protect congressional leaders to get the vaccine. This comes as more cities are refunding the police after last year's calls to defund. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Let's begin with the supply chain bottleneck. The nation's three largest package delivery services are out with their holiday shipping deadlines. The recommended final shipping days for the U.S. Postal Service, FedEx and UPS are pretty much the same as they were in 2019 and 2020. For UPS, three-day select delivery and FedEx three-day freight arriving by December 24th, you need to ship your items by the 21st. For Postal Service retail ground delivery arriving before December 25th, you should ship by December 15th. But even if you meet the deadlines, you could see late packages due to the ongoing pandemic and global supply chain disruptions. Also, the Postal Service made changes at the beginning of October that slowed down service. They also tacked on a temporary holiday price increase. This comes as President Biden is calling on the private sector to step up to address supply bottlenecks. The Biden administration announcing that the Port of L.A. will start operating 24-7. Major freight haulers, FedEx and UPS, and four major companies have agreed to utilize the night hours to help move an extra 3,500 containers per week. But that's only a fraction of what one container ship can hold. Biden's comments follow a senior White House official who told Reuters on October 11th that there will be things that people can't get this holiday season. Inflation is also part of the crisis. Consumer prices growing at a 13-year high. They climbed 5.4 percent in September, and it's hitting at the worst time of the year, the holidays. Another area with rising prices, gas. Experts say the existing supply is simply not enough to keep up with the high demand. According to AAA on Wednesday, the national average price for gas was $3.29 per gallon. Energy demand is back, but supply has not kept up. And that's driving up oil prices, leading to pain at the pump. Those of us on a fixed budget hurt more than those who do not. It's like you got to travel miles upon miles just to find a good deal. And the hike comes at a time when more people are hitting the road once again, with many returning to in-person work. And experts say to brace for those prices to continue climbing and warn that relief is still months away. Now, let's turn to a quick update on the Marine who made headlines for speaking out. Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Schiller entered a guilty plea to six counts during a hearing at Camp Lejeune. The charges include contempt towards officials, disrespect towards superior commissioned officers, and dereliction in the performance of duties. Back in August, Schiller started posting videos online criticizing top military leaders' handling of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. He continued to criticize U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin during the hearing. He called for Austin to, quote, throw his rank on the table. Scheller has been in the U.S. Marine Corps since 2005. He could lose pay and other military benefits if he is dishonorably discharged. Now for the continuing debate around vaccine mandates. Members of the U.S. Capitol Police Division that protects lawmakers must be fully vaccinated against the virus by December 6th, or they will be reassigned. That's according to an internal memo. The department's police chief explained that Dignitary Protection Division agents are often in tight spaces with groups of people for long periods of time. There is no vaccine mandate for the entire Capitol Police Department. A department spokesperson says the Dignitary Protection Division is the only component required to be vaccinated for now. Those agents protect congressional leaders like Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. This comes as a police union in Chicago says it's going to take the city to court over its vaccine mandate. The Fraternal Order of Police President John Catazara says they will seek an injunction to stop the city's vaccine rules. This afternoon, we're notifying the city of the demand for expedited arbitration along with filing a unfair labor practice with the labor board. Tomorrow, we will be filing court paperwork for a temporary restraining order and try and get some relief in the courts 
uh, and see where we go from there. According to the chief of Chicago's police union, the deadline for city workers to disclose their vaccine status is Friday. Those who aren't vaccinated will go on no pay status. Katazara predicts it could result in the police force reducing by half. Mayor Laurie Lightfoot's office did not immediately respond to a request for comment, but the mayor said employees who are not vaccinated will have to undergo testing twice a week on their own time and at their own expense. And on top of that, the military archbishop says Catholic troops can refuse the vaccine. Timothy Broglio, the Archbishop for the Military Services, says people can't sincerely hold a religious belief that receiving the vaccine would violate their conscience. Some of the lawmakers for the clients are asking for religious exemptions, told the Epoch Times their refusal revolves around the use of aborted fetal cells. A DOD spokesman also told the outlet each service has put into place processes that let members apply for religious exemptions. As police precincts across the country have faced calls to defund the police, some cities are doing the opposite, refunding the police. A city in Vermont just recently voted unanimously to spend $1 million to hire and keep police officers. Local media report that currently Burlington has 65 deployable officers. That's after the department lost 16 officers who resigned this year. Current officers will get $10,000 bonuses over two installments. New hires will get a $15,000 bonus, also spread out over their training. The money comes from pandemic relief funds. Major cities are also following suit. The New York Times reporting earlier this year that $200 million are earmarked for the New York Police Department. That includes $166 million for overtime. This comes a year after the mayor moved around a billion dollars from police resources to other areas. That was amid the calls to defund the police after the George Floyd protests. On the opposite coast, Los Angeles also beefing up funds for the police force with a 3 percent boost. That's also coming from pandemic relief funds. And Texas led the movement last year. Local reports note Austin cut police funding by a rate higher than a dozen cities around the country that also cut the police force budget. But the outlet went on to note the cut was too big. This year, council members shoveled money back into the force. The police force there has now the highest budget ever at a whopping $442 million. Dallas, Texas also faced a shortage of police. The mayor issued a statement calling for more officers to fend up the rising crime. And there seems to be a shift in public perception towards law enforcement. An Ipsos USA Today poll from March found less than one in five Americans supported defunding the police. USA Today notes only 18 percent of respondents supported the movement known as defund the police and 58 percent said they opposed it. And now before we end, a bird's eye view of a bald eagle nest in the making. The unique view coming from a Florida webcam. These two majestic birds of a feather are parents. They've been a bonded pair for more than 10 years. But a major storm destroyed their last nest. So the Ron McGill Conservation Endowment and Wildlife Rescue of Dade County teamed up to help them out. They built a solid platform for this year's nest, and the eagles have taken to it. Their hope is that with a more solid foundation, the nest could withstand the next storm, successfully leading to hatchlings. To keep an eye on it, they installed a webcam. They are sharing the live stream with the world. Look for the link on Zoom Miami's website. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.